you. I hope you enjoyed. Um, so Debbie, okay. I'm a Debbie, and then followed by Okay, okay. I just heard that this link has like 15 minutes. No, so no, no, it's been, been on going. for 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh, so, so we yeah. have like a half hour. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Okay, I won't take a long time. Anymore. But, um, Glenn, thank you for all your wonderful remarks about the other day. Interesting that you actually thought about my daddy, who um, I really didn't really want to give this talk because I didn't want to have to stand up here to think about him. And but and it took a long time putting all these thoughts together. And finally, on the airplane, I just thought, I just begged Heavenly Father, please help me. And so the um. The things I want to talk about is a, a legacy. My dad and your grandpa, my dad left me. And I carried with me in my life a legacy. And that legacy, and I looked up the word legacy because I thought, well, what's the legacy dad gave me? And legacy means an amount of money or property given in a will. Well, the legacy gave me is free. It's a free legacy that I saw him live every day of his life. And Glenn's right, dad wasn't perfect, but he was a man of faith. He gave me a legacy of faith, right. love, and endurance. And when it comes to the point of faith, dad, you know, dad had a really humble upbringing, as Glenn mentioned, and um, they had a very quick and fast marriage and uh, started parenting. And, you know, all this brought him around to his, to his journey of faith. And mom had the missionaries knock on her door. She didn't know anything about missionaries, but she knew that whoever her husband was, she was going to be whatever faith they were. So they knocked on the door and said, we're from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And she said, no, thank you. We're Mormons. And she went to shut the door. And they said they stuck their foot in the door, said, well, what do you know? So are we. <laughs> and so they got in the door and then they started teaching and mom and dad were receptive. And they had actually been committed to baptism, but they couldn't baptize them yet because Gramps just would not stop smoking. He had a really hard time with that. He had been a drinker and a smoker and a gambler, and he was having a really hard time smoking and giving that up. And um, he'd been smoking. He had his cigarette down by his side. And little Cindy was a toddler, and she was running around, and she ran right into the cigarette with her eye. And um, she just starts screaming and he picked her up and he, he looked in her eye and it was like all white. And he said it had been there a while. And he said, I just dropped, he told me this story not too long ago when he could still speak. And he said, I dropped to my knees and I just prayed, Heavenly Father, I will never smoke again. I promise you, I'll never smoke again. Just please don't let her vision be damaged. And um, he said, and I never smoked again. Cause I think I was asking him, was it hard to stop smoking? And he told me that story and he said, I never smoked again after that. That was the end of that. Dad, no matter where we were on vacation, I remember one particular vacation. So children think about this. We're in Arizona, we're in a tent, there's scorpions and dirt and all kinds of just hot, hot. And dad's like, okay, well, we're going to church. Everybody get up and I'm like, church, we're camping and we're in the dirt. But I did remember he made us bring our church clothes and I thought, he's serious about this. So we all tromp to the showers and everybody else is going swimming, right? We're tromping to the showers, we shower, we get cleaned up, put on our church clothes and we went to church. So he taught us that he was a man of conviction, like Lynn said, he lived what he believed and he believed what he lived, which really, really touched my heart. As a child, did we appreciate it? No. <laughs> you know, he'd say, time for family home evening. And we're like, ah, oh, we don't want to have family home evening and have to time it. And it was called family hour at that time. And he made us do it for like an hour. Remember yeah. that? And we were like, dad, come on. Anyway, so he was a man of faith. Just, and he taught me, my dad taught me that, that I could trust in God and that you loved God, that he in turn would take care of you and that you could trust in him and have faith in him. That I, I've lived by that because I, I saw that in my dad. You know, if there was a problem, he would always teach us to pray to, to handle our problems. So I was very grateful for that legacy of faith. He was also a great man of love. And um, he, I remember bedtime stories. He would tell stories about Billy Goat Gruff and um, what was the one he told you all the time? I got the little kids. Brer Rabbit. Brer Rabbit. 
three bears and he didn't just tell him like I mean when that big bad wolf would blow the house down he blew the house down really <laughs> loud and he made the stories so fun and it was really fun to hear those <coughs> bedtime stories he was he was a grandpa that taught you that you don't just cook a bur burger there's a way to do it you got to do it this way and that way and you got to flip it a certain way and sear in the juices right <laughs> He just loved life. He loved his family with all his heart and he would do anything. And mom and dad taught us that when you're a family, you stick together and you guys did that. And I thank you for that. I thank you and dad both for staying married and for giving us a stable home. I thank you for teaching us the gospel and for staying by dad's bedside. Every day you were there for him. He had wishes on how he wanted to pass, and you gave him those wishes. Your family and your home was a, a home of love and a home of caring for family members. Family was absolutely important to grandma and grandpa. You guys, no matter what we needed, even one time, this is a story more about grandma, but it's also about grandpa because this is how they were. Called grandma and said, Grandma, the stupid rooster we have is pecking Ashley every time she said it's hurting her and so I watched and she went out to go to the feed the rooster and the chickens and the rooster jumped on her back and it was spurring her in the back and grandma's like she's all the way in Dana Point we're in Escondido on the ranch and she's like I'm gonna be right there I said mom mom she's like where'd she go right so grandma shows up gets out of her car and pulls out a hatchet <laughs> and she catches the kids are all watching mortified and she says we'll show this rooster she gets the rooster chopped off his head in front of the children and it was a dull hatchet oh beautiful. and then she says i said mom what are you gonna do she said we'll just take him home and i'll have him for dinner it's fine it's fine but grandpa was the same way grandpa we lived in you know how hard it was for grandpa to walk let alone pick heavy things up we lived in um uh, Capo Beach at the time, and we didn't have lawn mowing tools. And so every week, Grandpa would get his lawnmower. Mom was working. He put his lawnmower and his blower and everything in his car, drive to Capistrano Beach to where we were renting, and he would mow our lawn and edge and everything. Talk about talk about love and the, a willingness to do anything for their family. So he was also a father that gave me a legacy of love, love for my father in heaven, love for family and others. And the other thing that grandpa did is he taught me to push through and to endure, um, to endure pain, to endure hard times. You know, when they first got married, they had some counseling. It was rough. You guys stuck in there. You just, you just kept pushing back to anything that got in your way. T things were tight. They moved us to um, Dana Point for a better life. Things were really tight. You guys just were like, okay well then we're gonna make it work and you guys made it work and you're right glenn our vacations were moving rocks and planting gardens and i remember saying i don't want to eat this rabbit i don't want to eat rabbit i'm not eating that <laughs> yes you are i said no i'm not <laughs> yes you are that's what's for dinner and you're eating it <laughs> you wonder why i don't like meat <laughs> anyway so they just he dead dead and grabbed this just somebody who pushed through no matter how much it hurt and I want to tell you, grandchildren, grandpa recognized how loving and kind and patient and, and thoughtful you were. I can't tell you how many times I've seen each one of you when we were on a walk or doing something and you would go and you'd see grandpa in the back. I asked little Randy what he remembered and he said, mom, I have this one memory of, no, it was Dusty told this story. I have this one memory of when um, grandpa and all of us were walking to the springs and I looked back and there was Gramps, I mean, trying to keep up with the, the group. And I just went back there and put my arm around him and said, hey, Gramps. And I didn't act like I was loitering, but I was loitering to make sure he wasn't alone. And all of you have done that for him. You, you, you loved him because you knew he loved you. Um, so I wanted to say that in his endurance, he, he never gave up. And I wanted to um, honor him by saying that in finishing his life, I feel my dad was able to say what the Apostle Paul said, and, and I'll read this, and it's in 2 Timothy 4, 5 through 7. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And it wasn't until we all told dad, dad, it's okay. You can go. You don't have to keep fighting. 
And I think he hung on until Uncle Randy and I came because he was like really, really struggling. He, I hadn't seen him where he wasn't responsive, but there was one time when we were getting ready to go that he actually opened his eyes and he looked at Randy and he looked at me and it was clear. And we just told him how much we loved him, told him that um, it was okay for him to go. And then he, he just kind of went back into that place where he wasn't alert, but he, I think he waited. And then he knew it was time and that he could go. Um, in Ecclesiastics, we read to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to da dance. Grandpa used to tell all the grandchildren that when he died and went to heaven, he was going to pick up his heels and run through the fields in heaven. This is his time, time to have no more physical pain and to be with his loved ones that welcomed him home. We love you, Grandpa. Thank you for your legacy and thank you for your life. So um, I just want to underscore what Lynn and Debbie have said. So many of the things that they've said have been on my mind. We were lucky to have such a dad. And it's true, he could get grumpy. And I'm sure mom told me that his whole life, he was in pain and he wouldn't take pills a lot of times because it messed with his indigestion. And he just felt like this is my lot and I will face it and be strong. So um, there was, you know, times that he'd be walking around Disneyland all day. And by the time he got home, he was sore. And um, for us to be able to live in Disneyland, I've given, I mean, in uh, Dana Point, I've given that a lot of thought when we were driving today. He drove a long way from Dana Point to Disneyland for years and years, and years so that we could live in a better place. I was getting chased and all kinds of things were happening. There was a lot of unrest at my school that we were at. And mom and dad were looking at that and saying, we, we've got to move. This isn't safe where we were. It just kind of grew up all around us and we needed to be in a more peaceful place. And our grandparents, grandma and grandpa Hart helped us find a house. We found that house to live in and told grandma and grandpa about it. And we were really grateful to move there. It was a good life. And we were kind of dropped in with all of the money and the cars. And the, But I know that people would come to our house. Our friends would come to our house because they could feel the love and just how they wanted it to be, you know, where they could have just fun. And we, mom was always cooking yummy stuff and bread, homemade bread, our friends. I remember Kathy, my friend would always ask if she could come over to our house. And she just loved my mom and dad and she didn't even spend that much time with them. But she hadn't, she didn't have a dad. And she just would always tell me, so lucky to have a dad. Um, I, I really underscore the things that have been said today about dad's joy, his commitment, his ability to soldier on through hardships that weren't any of his fault. I think that's interesting as well, that he just took what he was dished out and made the best of it. I thank him for teaching me how to fish. I don't fish anymore, but I've had a lot of fun fishing experiences with my father. And, uh, one, one of my best memories is uh, giving him a Father's Day gift where we took off by ourselves. Like you said, he taught us to love nature. And I took him up to Crystal Lake and we went fishing for five days. Two of us. That's one of my best memories with my dad. I know that my parents did make a good home for us cared about us. And when you guys think of grandpa, you almost can't think of grandpa without thinking of grandma. They were like just an iconic unit of love. And when you go to their home, everybody likes going there because 
it was always just happy. There was peaceful joy there for us. We all got to run around. It's our last, um, we bring our kids to play there and uh, all of you older grandkids have memories of that jacuzzi flashing around in that and grandpa cooking his burgers like debbie said we had a certain way to do that and um glenn's right dad didn't get degrees he had to finish and walk away from school and he had to finish his some of his education at night school and Disneyland helped out with that and got his electrician's degree. And, um, I remember he was proud of that. And, and I felt proud of him too, that he was moving up at his job. Some of you might not know, but my dad really felt loyal. Well, funny thing to talk about, but he loved Walt. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Grandpa started when they first began, and Walt would come and walk around through the park, and sometimes Dad would see him. It really tore Dad up when Walt died. And he was real loyal to Disneyland when they were having strikes, and everybody was wanting more money, and um, there was fighting with the union. Dad didn't like all that. He didn't, he didn't find his place in that. And he went, stood his ground and he said, I'm my own guy. I don't want to be part of that. And uh, I believe if I do a good job, they're going to pay me. And that was just saying in his point of view. And he went through the lines and they called him scab and all kinds of other stuff. Those were dramatic times in our life. I remember that. Mom and dad tried to protect us from it. But I just remembered as a kid that my dad was going every day while those strikes were going on and going to work anyway and showing up to work anyway. And they were mean to him. And he paid for that for years and was ostracized. And I think of that sometimes. Well, I stand where I need to stand, even when I might be standing alone. My dad did that. He showed me that. They painted our car. They came and dumped yellow paint, enamel all over our car, all kinds of things. And, and it was rough. Mom and dad had to go without pay for a little bit. And mom went to work and they got through it. They've been through a lot. And that, that kept me going through a lot in my life and holding on through times that were hard. And I just uh, really revere my family. My dad was a big part of that. And it impressed me forever. And I agree with Kevin Glenn, love us all, regardless, wherever we're at in our life, it's okay. You can't unlove yourself, my grandpa. No way. And grandpa loved you, and he loved me, and he loved all of us. And I know that's true. That's kind of what I want to say that I feel the unity of this family. And I attribute a lot of that to my mother and father, even though Gramps isn't physically here, like Glenn, Glenn said. Grant, Debbie said, left us a legacy. We are family. We are one. We are united. And we always will be. I was um, asked to sing a hymn. Um, I haven't opened a hymn that spoke for a while. <laughs> but my heart felt so much willingness to sing a hymn. 
And when I asked grandma, um, it was just so much just acceptance for who I am and my spiritual path and for the diversity in this family. I feel so much acceptance and love. And I have had some really sweet um, times with grandpa. So I've been preparing the music where it's been the same message, like that he just loves all of us, no matter what, no matter what we're believing, no matter what's going on, and that there's a place for all of us at the family table. I remember those, those, those closet when you first walk in to your house, and you'd have the leaves up for the table there. And it was like, when I was little, it felt like that table could just get bigger and bigger. <laughs> and there were more chairs in the garage and more chairs in the garage. <laughs> and I feel like that's today. Hi, everybody who can't be here. We feel you in spirit. I feel like we're seated at a huge family table and there's a place for all of us. And um, and I didn't remember the words to this song, but when I asked, well, what song do you want me to sing? And I was asking grandpa really like, and the, the funny thing is, I didn't know the words or either of the songs that he put into my head. <laughs> Um, but I was able to look them up, and um, and they both feel really perfect. Um, and I feel like the diversity of both of them also represents how accepting Gramps is of, of all of us. It's a little shaky, so I'm going to go down on the ground so I don't bust it. <laughs> Yeah. Keep thou my feet. I 
do not ask to be a distant thing. One step enough for me. Oh, thy power hath blessed me surely. Will lead me on, lead kindly light my way each step on the night is long. And with the morn, no angel face my whom I have loved. Meantime. Along the narrow rugged way, thy self has drawn. Dear Savior, lead me home in childlike faith, home to my God, to rest in love. After earthly rock in the calm light of Thank you for the uh, touching words, the music, for all being here. We're now going to have a um, benediction and a grave de uh, dedication by Randy. Following that, I'm just going to have a few comments. So this is a camera. You kind of talk. Dearest Father in heaven, my authority of the holy Melchizedek priesthood, which I hold, I dedicate and consecrate this grave and this burial site as a resting place for the body of King Lamar Griffin until such time as thou callest him forth in the morning of the resurrection. Um, Thank 
We pray, Father, that that would protect this place. That will always be a hallowed place, a safe and sacred place, a place of peace, a place of love. Heavenly Father, we offer gratitude to thee for thy son, Jesus Christ, for his atoning sacrifice, for the resurrection which is promised to all eternal life. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that thou will comfort our family in the passing of Graham. We are saddened with the lost days and moments that we may have had with him. He has been a devoted husband, a loving father, and grandfather, and a dear friend. We pray that our hearts will find peace and joy and healing and hope as we remember that we can be together again. May we all be comforted in knowing that life does not begin with birth, nor does it end with death. And we do this all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So we're coming to a close uh, at this graveside. No, is it a memorial? Graveside service. Um, and I really appreciate everyone's preparation, thought, love, and hard work, and reverence. Um, I think this is exact, exactly what uh, Grandpa would have wanted. Just exactly what he would have wanted. And it's all because of all of you. And so we need to celebrate as he lived. And uh, although we're sad, um, but we can find joy. So I think um, <clears throat> the only thing I want to say is, is from this point on, we're going to have, it's, uh, we're going to have a, I guess it's a recessional, I call it a recessional. I'm not sure the difference between the two. But uh, following Grandma Gray, what we're going to end up doing um, is, uh, if, uh, uh, grandpa's casket will be lowered. Okay, if they're going to lower it down. Um, and by the way, just make note of the casket. It was well thought out. Grandma Grace and 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 Grandpa came and they they picked out their spot. They did a lot. They did a lot of the heavy lifting here, by the way, and did the work ahead of time. But um, I think that casket represents Grandpa. Kind of, it's very masculine and cowboyish. He was a cowboy. So we're gonna lower that down. Um, we're gonna we're gonna ask Grandma Grace to go first. We're gonna give you each a rose and hand you a rose and pass by his casket. Uh, you can say any parting words that you would like to say to Grandpa, or any prayer in your heart, or anything that you feel comfortable with. You can put the rose uh, inside um, the grave. And if you have, uh, I know many of you have prepared notes. Or if you have prepared anything you want to put in there in addition to the rose, you can. I do know that there are notes that may, uh, may be coming out uh, after the fact. So following all that. And by the way, I'm not sure how this will work, Christy. What do you think is the best? We were going to sing Happy Trails as this happened. Are we going to be? I passed out song literature or song. I think as a family, we can make a choice about it. So I think Grandpa's a pretty good sense of humor. Okay. Because I had this song, Happy Chills, come to my mind, and I didn't even know the song. I had to look it up. Okay. I'm like, I don't think this is funeral appropriate. But then I thought, okay, he wants this. He wants this, us to sing him this song. And then I was, I was preparing it more. It became clear to me um, that it's his message to us. He wants to send us off with joy happy trails and the message of unity and that just really touched me and when I felt his presence and I felt that message and I and I knew what he meant by that and then I read through the words that's when it all clicked into place and I'm like oh of course he wanted us to do this so this is grandpa's message